What's up guys? So, today's video of course is on Wolf, as I promised on my Twitch. And Wolf is one of the easiest characters in the game to play, luckily. He is an extremely high reward character without too much risk. He has very good air movement speed, he has very good range, his grab combos, good com- uh, just good combos in general. Strong kill setups, despite having lacking raw kill moves. His, uh, his projectile is very good, he has reflector, and he can just blow people up for mistakes. He has extremely versatile kit. However, he is lower midweight. He has a very bad recovery, very exploitable depending on the character especially. All the people mess up, they will die for messing up. He is extremely easy to juggle as well. He also doesn't have the best get off the ledge options. And his attacks aren't that great on shields, so characters with good out shield options are really annoying. And he doesn't have a good like combo breaker either, so he gets pressured. It's frustrating. A lot of people think he's one of the best characters in the game. Some people think he's just very good. I'm kind of undecided. I know I lean towards playing him as one of the best characters in the game, but not like a top 5 or top 10 character. He might fall over time, he might rise. I think regardless, he's a solid tournament pick, and a solid pick if you just want to have fun with the character with low investment. So, with that said, let's talk about this character. Also, Falco's my training dummy because everyone uses Fox, and we're trying to be cool and be different here. So, this character has extremely interesting attributes. He actually has a bad dash speed, but extremely good initial dash, so you're gonna find you're gonna doing this a lot with Wolf. Just dash back and forth in neutral with the Foxtrot. You're not gonna to his full dash too much because it's actually slower than his initial dash, surprisingly. It's like, this is just better. His air speed is insane, though. Look, look how far he travels with a short hop. That's, that's insanely far. Full hop, insanely far. And his arrows are so good to complement that. His fall speed is also extremely fast, so he can mix people up. Extremely hard with things like Tomahawks, and just the timing of his aerials. I don't know I the timing, but... Like, he's able to mix people up by going into the air and landing really fast. So that's nice. Um, he's also able to juggle people pretty well. Because he can just do like this, fall, and continue the juggle. And keep that in mind, what else is there? However, because his fall speed's so fast, when he's offstage, he'll just plummet immediately and die. Especially if he's fast falling. And now, let's get into his actual moves. Keep in mind with this character, I... I consider him to be very versatile. You can play him as a rushdown offense character. You can play him as a defense character. I think he leans more towards the offensive style, though, despite the fact that his neutral B is broken, pretty much. And now, first off, jab. Whatever. Throw it out there. It's one, two, three. Doesn't kill. Sometimes it doesn't even jab block characters because of the way the hitbox works. And it's kind of just not a good move, I think. You use it because it's a frame four option. That's his fastest attack. Next is business forward tilt. Um, pretty good move. Lots of range. Decent kill power. I'm gonna move to a higher percent. Yeah, good kill power. You have to be not tip range to get both hits, but that's not too hard to do. It's really good for ledge trapping, because you can use this to bait a ledge option, and then, like, do this, react to a roll, or read a roll punish, or do this, and move in air. And it baits people out because they think, oh, you forward tilted? My time to get up. And the answer is, no, it is not your time to get up, sir. If you don't get up while I'm doing forward tilt, just don't think you can get up past this. It's also good as a pressure string tool. You do like a falling aerial, and then you're in space to do a forward tilt. It's really good for catching someone trying to press a button. Also, has a good out of spot dodge attack because there's so much range. You can angle it up and down. And I find you're going to use this mainly for shield pressure or for ledge trapping or as a whiff punish tool. Next up, down tilt. Um, down tilt is. Eh. It's a move. You can use this to like tech chase people, like do that and then read them not teching or like do this and read them rolling, but yeah, it has better frame data than forward tilt, but the range is low. And I think overall you're just not gonna find yourself using this move too much unless you want to hard read someone in neutral, but like knowing they're gonna miss an attack or knowing they're gonna press a button, and then hard read their tech option. Next up, up tilt. Up tilt is a mini snake up tilt. Has a very nice hitbox with a sour spot and a sweet spot. Sleep us on the toe, you can see I'm rising with it and getting like the toe and it's killing extremely early. Low end leg and low startup. But I do it too close. Here I get like the sour spot. You can combo off of this move at certain percents, I believe. I'm not sure the exact percents are, it's not the best window. Try one more time. Eh, maybe not. But, you can use this even just to set up, like, juggles, like, hit someone with this, and then they have to kind of jump or air dodge, and that can be really annoying to deal with against Wolf. 
And I really just use this when someone's landing on top of me. When someone's at the ledge and I read a ledge jump, it's really good. And it's... You get... You get what you say, basically. Next up, his smashes. Forward smash is an interesting move. Comes out frame 20. He leans back during this. So it makes a lot of moves whiff in front of him. And then he gets an easy punch because he takes a huge leap forward. Like, look at this range. That's actually crazy range. The end leg on this move isn't that high, so if it whiffs, it's pretty safe, actually. On block, this move is punishable, although people are afraid to punish this move. So if someone knows the matchup and knows that, be very aware. I really like it for ledge trapping, because you can just do this to catch someone's ledge options. If it hits them, cool the dead. If it whiffs, because it's too early, whatever. Or if you do the wrong option, because they like jumped over it or rolled, whatever. You're not going to get punished, really. And overall, I love it. It's also good for catching landings if someone's like landing on top of you aggressively. Dash back, do this. And yeah, it's overall a great move. If someone doesn't know the matchup, you can just pressure the shield with this and like, they'll get bodied. Like, this into Faruto just catch people off guard all the time. Next up, down smash. This move's main use is catching recoveries, in my opinion. Because it goes pretty low, lower than you'd expect. It's very good for catching someone jumping to the ledge. Or if someone's recovering even slightly too high, kill him. 55, he's dead. Some characters like Rosa actually can't avoid it, and it really sucks. There's also a sour spot and a sweet spot in the move. So try and go for the tip of the move to get the sweet spot. Because then he's dead at 66. So if you want to hard read someone as well, you use this move. Like, oh, you're going to spot dodge and we charge it slightly? You're dead at like 50. It's insane. Or if you're playing WarioWare, just throw this at zero mid stage. You might kill him. There's also a back hit. And that's also extremely powerful, although not as powerful, I believe. Also not as much range. This move is very punishable on block, though, so... Keep that in mind, like a good player is going to hard punish you for this move game block. Even the back hit is very punishable, so don't try to do something like this to be tricky. Next up is up smash. His up smash is a harder commitment up to in my opinion. Comes out slower. He low profiles moves during it though, which is really nice. So you do like this, go under the move. It always hits farther to the side than you'd expect. Like if you, uh, look how far that hits. That's actually pretty far. Decent kill move. And I don't really think there's anything particularly special about this move besides the fact that it low profiles and it's a stronger than up, up tilt. So, yeah. Next up is his grab game. And his grab game is actually very important and I kind of want to just get to this because his grabs are amazing. He has a low percent down throw dash attack. He has up throw up air. He has a back throw which kills. His grab balls comes out frame 6, which is... In this game, a frame 6 standing grab is absolutely absurd. Dash grab is frame 8. Pivot grab is frame 9. Now, his grab range isn't the best, but it's not even bad. It's actually pretty good range on his grab, all things considered. And I think overall, as a wolf player, you're relying on his grabs, actually. You're going to be doing a lot of just reading people, dashing around, suddenly just going, jump, tomahawk, grab them. In fact, you're going to do this so much. Tomahawking people, dashing back and forth, rolling behind them and grabbing, and just conditioning them with forward airs and then grabbing them. So, really, really keep that in mind. Remember, back throw kills, up throw and down throw can both combo. There are also certain percents you can do down throw into side B. I don't know the percents, it depends on someone's DI. Generally, they can just DI down a way to evade it. But there is a document in the Wolf Discord, which links all the percents for that. Next up, also his dash attack, I forgot to mention, is a very good move. It goes really far, comes out kind of slow at frame 11, but it lingers to frame 18, so it's good for catching spot dodges and rolls. And I find myself using this a lot in neutral when people are pressing buttons, where it's like, ah, you're gonna space an attack and miss? Let me just do this. Or, ah, you're gonna, you're gonna spot dodge? Let me just do this. You're gonna roll? Let me just do this. It can kill with the lingering hitbox, like, that can kill people. But close range, you can combo off this hitbox. So that's actually really sick to do like early hit dash attack into something if you're fast. Maybe even lower percents. Even if it doesn't hit because this up air is so good, which I'll talk about next, like you can just shrink people together really hard. Next up, actually, let's talk about his up air. So his up air is insane. It comes at frame seven. It can kill. You can combo into it. You can't really combo off of it unless it's like a falling up air like this. Maybe you can combo off of it at the right percents. But you just use it to keep him in the air. There's a lot of damage. And overall, it's just... Combine that with his amazing airspeed. 
jumping around just uppering people is legit a great option. If I didn't stink. And I actually love Wolf's Advantage State when juggling for this reason, because it's so much range on it and so much speed. Like, legit. You can force people to ledge by just doing this over and over. And if someone air dodges, it's solo and lag and landing lag. You can just do this, fast fall, react to the air dodge, punish. So, and if someone's trying to, like, jump you from the air, just do this. I think, honestly, this is his best anti-air move. And another reason that up tilt and up smash kind of overshadowed is because he just goes up air. Next up, his forward air. Ooh, his forward air is... Ooh, that's a move. First of all, mixing people up with rising forward air and falling forward air is really important. Because there's such a huge difference in timing of this versus this. And when you play Wolf, you are constantly going to want to do things like rising forward air. Fast fall, which can combo, by the way. Rising forward air. And then suddenly you just go, you know what? Falling forward air. Try to combo into that and you're dead. So yeah, you catch people off guard with this. Comes out frame 7. Massive hitbox. Wolf's aerial drift is so important for him because he's able to do things like this fair and then immediately drift back, especially if he's in place. Like, this is great. You can drift past someone across with their shield. It's pretty unsafe on block, especially rising forward air, so try to make sure you have good space with it. Otherwise, a good player will punish your shield with their fastest outshield option, which is not too hard to do against Wolf. But luckily, it's not too, easy, uh, too hard to cross people up either or space around people with this forward air because of his air speed. So yeah, this is the key of his uh, his game plan, in my opinion. Just spam this all the time. Falling forward, it can link it to itself into up there. So like, this is a basic combo that's really good. And then you string people together. And then go for the up there and just hold your advantage state. Great for ledge trapping. Great for air to air. Because it's just, it does everything. This is basically a Swiss army knife of aerial moves. If you want to do something with this move, just do it. And just know your confirms. You can even do something like bear side B at the right percents to kill people. You can use it as a suicide option as well. I like fair back air a certain percents as well, so that's nice. You can even do like fair dash, they can do whatever you want up there. Fair gives you, particularly falling forward air, gives you anything you want. But we're not done with his amazing aerials. Neutral air. Oof. This move is frame 7, so it's not the fastest neutral air, but it has good range. It lingers, you can combo into some things so like that combos if I do it faster. Do you like falling there, the dash attack. Forward tail even. Okay, not that percent. But yeah, weak hit in air gives you cool combos. And strong there gives you combos as well. So something like that does combo. And this move is punishable block as well. But once again, because of Wolf's air speed, you're gonna constantly want to mix people up by doing things like falling there and retreating with it, nair and cross someone up with it. It's not the best option in neutral, but where it really shines is actually I lie, it's good in neutral because you can cross people up with it. And the timing with punishing this versus a forward air can be different. And just the combos you get off both moves are different. But it really shines at the ledge. Like someone's at the ledge, and you do this, you can catch a regular getup and get up jump and get up attack. All by just doing this. You can also block and block like a jump aerial and then punish with the neutral air or an up air or a forward air because of all frame seven moves. This move also can kill by the way. It's like this, that can kill. Look at that knockback. Someone rolls, you do this, and you lean back with the move, and look how much distance you cover. That covers the roll easily. And we already saw you have lingering nair combos, so that's amazing. And I find that when you're playing as Wolf, just spam this at the ledge. Like, you don't need other things at the ledge, you just do this. You use other things to kill people, like condition people with this neutral air while blocking and just neutral airing around. And then suddenly go, okay, this is enough no neutral airing. Let me just back air now. And let's talk about back air next. This move is low landing lag. However, if someone blocks this move, it's surprisingly punishable. People know the matchup will punish this move on block once again, even not far enough with it. There is a sweet spot and a sour spot. Sour spot is kind of his legs. And the sweet spot kills you at absurd percents and is his foot. It goes really far, actually. And I think this move is a hard read move. You use it when you know someone's going to jump. You want to like read the ledge jump. You know when someone's going to miss an attack, you want to kill him, you do this. Particularly, I use this move at kill percents. Because it's such a powerful kill move. And you don't really get combos off of the move. So even at 20%, it's too much knockback. And then you don't really want to go for the sour spot. Because you might as well go for a nair or a forward air. But yeah, kill percents is great. And because it comes out frame 13. It catches people off guard who are expecting a forward air or a neutral air. Because like you can jump in them. Look like you're going to forward air and then go past them and back air. And if they try doing a jump out of shield or something. You'll just catch them. 
Or if someone's pressing buttons in neutral, you know you can make them miss an attack, you do this, punish them. I mentioned for ledge chopping, this is a great option to catch ledge jumps. Absolutely phenomenal option to catch ledge jumps. Or regular get up or get up attack, depending on when you time this. Even roll, you can do like this, and suddenly just catch the roll with the jump. You're noticing I always use my jumping for movement as this character, because it's so dang important. And yeah, I just, I love this move. Next up, down air? Damn it, phone might be ring. Downer is an interesting move. It doesn't really fit into Wolf's kit well because he doesn't want to go off stage much. He's pretty much almost always going to stay on stage. That's one of his biggest weaknesses, is he isn't really edge guard too without committing too hard. But anyway, downer. Big hitbox. Doesn't come out too slowly. And it's a decently powerful spike. You can do cool setups with this, like forward air into down air at certain percents. It is a very true combo ever. But you catch people off guard if they're DIing in, in that case, it might true combo if they're DIing in. You could also do something like a low sense, downer them, and if you hit them, the downer go for another one. But I really just find that if you go for the downer, you're kind of betting it all on the spike. It's really good with rage because of that, because you can scare people by like, mixing them up with the forward airs and whatever, neutral again, the grabs, and then just going for this. You read the recovery, they're dead. Like I said, you can even double dip, but at low, low percents, it won't kill them, so keep that in mind. You want to use this at mid percents. And really, it, it doesn't fit into his kit too much, so I want to focus on it too much. Next up is his specials. Now, his best special by far is Neutral B. Oh my god. This move is absurd. So first of all, if someone blocks this move at, like, longer ranges, it is plus on block for Wolf. Meaning, Wolf can act before the opponent can, if the opponent blocks this move. Like, at this distance, if Alpha blocked that, I can act first. Even at this distance, I think I can act first. Meaning, I can do this and immediately jump forward and get right into range to start spacing forward airs. Crazy. Hitbox on this move is massive. Absolutely ridiculously massive. It does good damage. So it's like it'll catch people short hopping. It'll catch people jumping. It is pretty fast and goes really far. So like this locks people down. When you're playing Wolf, I mentioned you want to constantly mix up your aerial spacing and your timing and look for those and Tom will grab people. And you use this move to get into spacing to use that. Like you can't use this up close really, you can, but it's pretty unsafe like here. Even here it's pretty negative on blocks, like someone can pressure you, but here you just do it. And then you can do it again. You can just move forward and it's insane. Also, even underneath the platform, spamming this move underneath the platform is so obnoxious because then people can't jump over you. Like if there's a platform, say right above Wolf, but in front of him slightly, good luck getting over to Wolf. You gotta start blocking and parrying this thing. It does good shield damage. And then you can just start saying, hey, you're jumping at me? You're laying on the platform? Cool, let me upgrade you for free now. It's pressure. Speaking of which, he loves platforms because he can make big strings of platforms. And oh man. But with that said, it's it's pretty much what you uh, get is what you see. It can be okay for like catching jumps off stage, but it's not that great because it is still kind of slow startup. And if someone's off stage and not expecting Wolf to chase them off stage, or if they are, they can react to like the back air or the neutral air, like they can react to Wolf going off stage, and he's it's such a high commitment option that they're not gonna do it much. So yeah, it's okay for that. If someone reflects this move and you have enough distance, you can reflect it back. And because he can hold the reflector out, he will never lose a reflector using his neutral B. I've tested this, and like because of the way reflect damage multipliers work, at least as far as I know. It seems that whenever someone tries to play a Reflect War with this move, he always wins and breaks the Reflect and does over 50 damage. Speaking of Reflector, by the way, let's talk about this move. This move, I think, is... it's okay. It comes out frame 6, so it can be used as a combo breaker. Watch out, the Invincibility comes out frame 6. So that's okay for combo breaking, but... Whatever, you can combo into Saibu off of this at certain percents and certain spacings, but... I don't know exactly the timings or spacings. There's something in the Wolf Discord uh, showing this. Obviously, it's a good reflector, but nothing special. And I think there's actually a lot of room for this move to be part of Wolf's metagame. But I don't know exactly how you use it. Besides, like, hard read, like, land someone reflector, oh, close hitbox, do that, or just normal reflector. Doesn't stall its recovery or anything. But you can be versed in the air turn around. You want to do like that, for some reason. And you can also use the cancel fast fall like this. Suddenly, fast fall no longer. Next, side B. This move is a combo ender. So it can kill people if you get like this. You can even kill people to the side if you get different hitboxes. 
So it's pretty cool. You can angle up and down the side B slightly. So like, angle it up versus angle down. You see that actually hits him angling down versus no angle. So it's good for recovery, good catching people in combos. And there's honestly a lot to work with. This move is a big hitbox. It's hard to challenge. So if people mess up an edge guard, you just side B them and do a lot of damage, potentially kill them. It's actually really fun because if someone messes the edge guard up, they might just die from this. And don't be afraid to use that as the punish tool because it comes out really fast, surprisingly, for the range it does. It can also catch people during like the traveling hitbox. So that's pretty nice. So another reason that like if someone misses edge guard, you just side B and you punish them. Because you do like side B, hit them with that, they get knocked up, and then back air. And the next tip is up B. Pretty bad. <laughs> I I barely made that. It does kill though. So if someone messes up the edge guard once again, you up B into them, they're gonna die. It's actually a very good strategy to do up B. Hold down near the end of it. So that way you can like go through the ledge with the move. And hit them and potentially kill them. Because sometimes they get knocked behind Wolf and that's really annoying. Especially if you reverse this like that. Oh man. Of course you can angle in different ways, so like don't be afraid to just angle it like this when you're off stage, but then angle it like this next time, and then next time do like side B. You have to constantly mix up your recovery options. If you watch my Young Link guide, it's kind of similar, where you have to save your double jump, and have to constantly know when it's worth recovering in certain ways, and react to your opponent and know when you can challenge them. Counter characters in particular are obnoxious because they can kill you for side being at like any percent, but they can also kill you for up being, so it's like, this not really a good answer. And characters that just go off stage and hit you very quickly, don't let you have time to side B or up B because they both come out like frame 20-ish. What else? Keep in mind this character's air mobility is really good. So you might just have to rely a lot on when you're off stage. Air dodging to ledge. In fact, I think with Wolf you have to do this a lot of close because... Oh rip. Because if you're like here, you don't really want to up B. And you don't want to side B and just give you a point of time to catch your landing. Oh, there's not too much landing lag on this move. But like, yeah, around here, you probably just mix up your air dodges very well. Or like, mix up drifting back. But if you get knocked off stage too far as well, you're just dead. And if you get knocked off stage without a double jump, you're ultra dead for a good player. And I really want to make this point. Do not bring your double jumps as well poorly. Whether you're being juggled or you're off stage. Because you're being juggled and you lose your double jump. You don't have a combo break aerial. And you're going to be knocked to the side and killed. So, save your double jump as long as you can. Use your double jump to escape edge guards, to escape juggles, and use it just really smartly. Don't use it in neutral unless you absolutely have to. Because even neutral, if you do this and get hit out of it at like a decent percent, you might just die. And yeah, I think that's all of his moves. To summarize with this character, he uses a lot of forward air, neutral air, back air, and neutral, along with his amazing air drift ability and just raw air speed. On the ground, you got dash dance a lot, as opposed to uh, committing to your dashes. You use a lot of neutral to be on the ground. Your best grounded tool for spacing, I guess, is forward tip. You're not ready to use this too much. You really gonna rely on a strong advantage state on both ledge trapping and juggling the wood matches. But your neutral is also very strong, so you can rely on that. And just watch out for your spacing because his attacks aren't the best on shield. But they are pretty decent on whiff. It's kind of weird that, like, He's better off missing attacks a lot of times, as opposed to having the attack blocked. But it's more of a function of this uh, this game's engine, because his landing leg isn't that great than anything else. And, yeah, I think that about covers it. I'm sure I think this got a little bit more concise compared to the last one. And, yeah, if you have any questions about Wolf, feel free to let me know. I hope this helped anyone who was trying to pick a Wolf, wasn't really sure where to start with how to play this character. Peace out.